Hi, I'm Mark and this is Foothill Paint and Fabrication. Today we're going to get some priming done on the bed and the tailgate. Um, I've got it hung up here ready to go. Uh, we're going to be using polyester primer again, but we're going to modify it a little bit today using some acetone to get it to lay down smoother. So let's jump over to the bench and get some mixed up and get some priming done. Okay, today we're going to be back using some polyester primer. This happens to be from PCL. Um, we'll, I'll be using this, actually I reuse the mixing cup because it's catalyzed in here. It's hard as a rock. So long as nothing flakes off, you can keep reusing these over and over again until the cup breaks. So I'll reuse that to save some uh, materials. And then I've already got this stirred up. So we're going to pour this off into the cup real quick. And I got to figure out about how much uh, primer we're going to need. I don't even think not even a whole quart. Uh, so I'm going to pour off a little bit and if I need to mix more, I'll mix more. Uh, that's the thing about catalyzed materials. You can't put it back in the container. So I got my paper towels ready like I usually do just in case I spill. And today what we're going to do is we're going to use acetone to thin this a little bit. So let me pour this off here real quick. there I think I hope first pour is always the hardest get that wipe that off okay so we have uh, not quite a quart here ready to go uh, but before I put any hardener in it I'm gonna want to reduce it a little bit with some acetone now this is fairly thick heavy body primer so it doesn't, it tends to orange peel a little bit. I don't care how you have your gun adjusted. It's just, that's the way it comes out because it's uh, the droplets being atomized are a little thicker. And when they hit, they really don't flow out as well as, you know, like a clear or, uh, you know, a single stage paint would. So we're going to reduce a little bit. Now the instructions uh, say don't reduce it, but there is actually acetone in here. Um, it's one of the ingredients in here. So what we're going to do is, I don't reduce it more than 10%. So let's say we, we we're doing a full quart here, then that means you don't want to put more than 3% of acetone in there. And that's what's worked for me. And so what this will do, it'll allow it to, um, so I'm going to estimate about how much to put in uh, just from experience. And that's going to be about it right there, maybe just a little bit more. And that's it. So that wasn't a whole lot of acetone, but it's going to make a big difference. So I got the stir stick here that I mixed up some other um, cat, uh, catalyzed material with, so it's, it's safe to go in here. I can't use that stick and then re-stir that one with the same stick, obviously, because it ha will have catalyzed material on it. So this acetone is going to help this uh, primer flow out a little bit better. And since we're getting to the final stages, it's more important. So I don't want to go and have to sand out some orange peel kind of primer and then hit it with 600 to uh, get to my final uh, smoothness for color and clear and that's why I'm adding a little bit of acetone to this to get it to uh, thin down just a little bit and it'll spray that much better. So this is almost a full quart so that would be half an ounce of hardener. So I'm going to go ahead and this is a full tube and this is a full half ounce so I'm going to go ahead and start adding that in. We're not at quite at a full quart, so I'm going to hold a little bit back. And so this is not a lot thinner than it normally is, but it's considerably uh, thinner than it would be um, it normally when you so when you spray it, you'll know the diff notice the difference. So like usual, I'll scrape the sides. It's, I always consider this like mixing epoxy. Um, you want to make sure you scrape the sides real good and you get everything. You don't want anything that hasn't been exposed to that hardener. And then I'll let it sit a little bit. Uh, I mix it up good, like I always do, and then I'll let it sit while I'm prepping the panels for the primer. So it's not going to hurt just to sit here for a little bit. I'll put a paper towel over it so none of the acetone evaporates out and makes it thick again. And then before I put it in the 
cup, we will go ahead and mix it one more time. Okay, I thought I'd show you real quick how I hang this tailgate. So on these uh, 50 tailgates, and I think a lot of them, there's a hole right there in the tailgate on each side. It's uh, about a quarter inch hole. So I took a quarter 20 bolt coarse thread and I taped it up and then I left some of the threads exposed. I slid those in and then when you put the wire on it to hang it up at an angle, it kind of pulls up and binds those threads in that hole so it can't fall out. And then the wire's going up at an angle pulling inwards anyway. So do that on both sides and uh, then you've got a great way of hanging it and you can spray all the way around both sides without having to worry about uh, you know moving a fixture or something or painting one side and then letting it dry and then painting the other side. So it works out really well. The bed's ready to go. We're going to blow everything off again, tack it, and then uh, we'll start spraying some primer. Okay, tack rag's about time to retire this old thing. So we're gonna use it on this one last job. I'll get a new one out. And then we'll use that from now on. Tack rags are cheap, but I like these, use these old worn out ones because they're not too sticky. So they're great for using on primer. I don't know what that was. It could have been fly poop or something. I don't know, but I had to sand it off. Okay, we're all blown off. Uh, looks good. Uh, just had two little spots right there. It could have been fly poop or bug poop. I don't know. Uh, it's been set a couple of days, so um, I'm going to walk around, make sure I didn't miss anything that I need to get before I put prime on for the final time, and then we'll get some spraying done. Okay, I got to put my bag over the camera here. Try to protect it while I'm painting. Okay, I'm gonna keep the air pressure as low as possible, still get a good pattern and try to lay it down nice and smooth so there's no dry spots and it looks as wet as possible. So that lays down nice and smooth. So when we go to sand it with 600, it's a piece of cake. So let me hit this other fan on, uh, get my respirator on. I'll adjust the gun right on the, on, the, on the side of the truck here and then we'll get this sprayed out. Okay, here I am laying down the primer. Now I'm trying to use a perfect 50% overlap on my passes. 
and watching my starts and stops very carefully so there's no dry spots and then that'll make that much easier to sand out so there's uh, no orange peel or dry spots to have to sand out. Now this uh, this Amazon gun I'm testing out here it uh, it is not working out very well. If you listen you can hear after I let go of the trigger the air continues to flow and it's very frustrating so uh, this gun is not going to make the cut I can tell you that. Uh, it gets the job done but it's just not a very good gun all in all. So uh, let's get the rest of this thing sprayed up and then we can move on to the next steps. Right here you can see the 50% overlap a little bit better as I lay down the primer on this panel. Now uh, using the 50% overlap it allows me to get a good uniform film thickness and smooths it all out. And we're just about done with this panel here. And uh, as you can see uh, the gun sticks again, the air part, and so I have to give it a good whack to get it to shut down. Very frustrating. And uh, I'm, when we, it's time to paint uh, color and clear, I'm going to have to figure out a better way of getting out of, in and out of that bed because my legs are not long enough and it's going to go bad real easy. Okay, we got it all sprayed. I know you guys uh, can't tell on the camera, but it's it laid down really flat. Uh, let me clean the gun real quick, and we'll take a close-up view of it, and we'll see that uh, it, it came down, uh, it flowed out really nicely, so when we go to sand it with 600, it's going to be a piece of cake. We won't be sanding out a bunch of orange peel. So uh, let me get that gun clean real quick, and we'll take a look. Okay, we got everything coated. About a medium coat on it, and it came out really smooth it's hard for me to show on camera but that laid down really nice and smooth so it's going to be really easy to sand with 600 grit and get it ready for uh, color so i don't know if you can make that out on there probably not but uh, it looks good tailgate's looking good i had to hit a few spots on each of them where some of the red was showing through the original red that lacquer i'm assuming it's lacquer from the 50s and it's trying to bleed through so I hit it a couple of times so this stuff could encapsulate it and once we sand it it should be good we can put the color right over the top of it not worry about any blistering or reactions or anything like that so um, we are ready to let this sit overnight and we're going to sand it with some 600 and it'll be ready for color and clear okay that just about wraps up this video Ooh, I almost put my hands in wet primer that'd be pretty stupid right uh, let's see the tailgate came out great I'm really happy the way it looks and the bed uh, it really looks fantastic for 70 year old bed um, we took out some dents filled some holes took out a lot of gouging and worked with what we had um, there were some other repairs on this thing i didn't rework uh, but i think it looks great now adding just a little bit of acetone to that polyester primer made all the difference on the flow out now <clears throat> excuse me Normally when you lay that down at full strength, you haven't reduced it at all, which they don't recommend you reduce it at all anyways. But you're doing a lot of filling and you're doing some heavier sanding, so it doesn't matter. But when you're getting to the final steps like this, I'll throw a little acetone in there like I mentioned earlier, and it just makes it flow out nice and smooth. So when we go to sand it with some 600 or 400 uh, wet or dry, um, it sands super easy. You're not sanding some orange peel off and a bunch of other stuff. You just basically smoothing it all out making it look like glass so when you put the base coat on it it looks fantastic so uh, just that little bit of acetone don't go carried away with it just a little bit goes a long way like i mentioned earlier i wouldn't go more than 10 percent 
you know, uh, and be careful with it. It's not going to break down the binders. It's not going to break down the resins and ruin the material. It's just going to make it spray a little bit easier and flow out that much better. So, uh, and another point, um, I'd like to thank all, everybody that's subscribed so far. I've been doing this for a few months now, and I really appreciate all the subscribers, the comments, and you guys sharing it with your friends. Uh, it's, uh, it's made a big difference for me uh, getting some people following. And hopefully I'm able to show people, you know, how I do this and they can do it themselves at home or, or whatever. But I, re I really do appreciate it. So thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint and Fabrication. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe. Uh, if you like what you saw, hit that like button and mash that bell icon so you get a notification every time I release a new video. We'll see you on the next one. We're going to get this sanded and get some color and clear on these things.